Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I didn't hear you. Did you call me? I called you Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That sounds very good. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Director, I've listened uh, from my office to your testimony today. Tell me who had the authority to call out the National Guard on January 6th. My understanding, well, my understanding is that the decisions to call out the National Guard in one sense are the responsibility of the Secretary of Defense, uh, but in another sense, have okay. to be. Mr. Director, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you, um, but w I think we can agree that the FBI had credible information that there was likely to be violence on January 6th. Can we agree on that? Well, well, I don't know that we had assessed its credibility. We certainly had information that was concerning uh, about the potential for violence uh, in connection with the January 6th events. And as we've discussed here this morning, right, the was... one piece of information that was most specific uh, that I'm aware of was passed, uh, you know, quite well, quickly. Well, ba based on that information, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we just keep nibbling at the edges and dancing around the issue. And I understand, I'm not asking to throw anybody under the bus, Chris, I, I, I get it. But we need to find out what happened. Now, if, if, if you were king for a day, based on the information that you had, maybe not at the time, but later on, would you have called out the FBI? I mean, the, uh, uh, the National Guard? You know, Senator, as you said, I really want to be careful not to be armchair quarterbacking others. I think the National Guard uh, we have seen uh, can play a very important role okay. in crowd Excuse control. Excuse me for interrupting. Yeah. Boy, I sure, you know, I'm not trying to be rude, but my time's limited. Um, well, who made the call not to, based on your information, who made the call not to call out the FBI, whether they should have or shouldn't? Not to call the FBI? I'm sorry, I'm tired. The National Guard. Um, well, I would defer to others who are more involved in that discussion, but from what I have heard, what I have read, uh, my understanding is that uh, at one stage of the process, the uh, local government was of the view that it did not need the National Guard's assistance. Who do you mean by the local government? The mayor? Yes. Um, so and, and the, ma the mayor didn't call out the National Guard? At the, at the beginning. Uh, what do you mean by the beginning? Well, you know, in the day or two leading up to the 6th. Okay. Then as to exactly how it played out on the 6th itself, you know, I'm not as but sure I, I'm, about I'm, yeah. I mean, clearly our people are, uh, were overrun by, by, by the nut jobs. So we're making progress here, okay? So the mayor or the city government decided not to call out the FBI, or the uh, National Guard ahead of time. Um, what about the, the House Sergeant in Arms? Uh, I don't know what role the House Sergeant in Arms played with respect to the National Guard. Okay. How about the Senate Sergeant? Same answer. Okay. How about the uh, Capitol Police, the Chief of Capitol Police? Did the Chief of Capitol Police make the call not to call out the National Guard? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. My understanding is that the uh, law enforcement officials here uh, with responsibility over the Capitol, uh, that there were varying dis differing views about whether or not the National Guard was appropriate and when at what level. But all I really know on that is what I've, same thing you've seen, you know, in the press coverage of, uh, of the events. Okay. That's enough on that. Um, I listened to your comments about diversity, and I thank you for your for your good work there. I think any fair-minded person has to conclude that uh, that diversity is a strength, not a weakness. But this subject comes up a lot, and I think it's going to come up a lot again. And and uh, that's not a criticism; that's just a an observation. Thank you. Um, do you believe that the FBI is a systemically racist? institution? Uh, no. 
I, now, having said that, I do believe the FBI needs to be more diverse and more inclusive than it is, uh, and that we need to work a lot harder at that, and we're trying to work a lot harder on that. Do, do you believe that the FBI is a systemic, uh, systemically sexist or misogynistic institution? Again, that's not the way I would describe the FBI that I know and see every day. But again, it's a place where we need to be more diverse and inclusive, and we need to work harder at that. And we are working harder at that, and we've got progress that we still need to make to at least to be satisfactory by my standards. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Mr. Director, have you ever been to Hong Kong? No. Wonderful place, wonderful people. Um, the Chinese Communist Party is destroying it. If Congress passed a bill and, and said to the good people of, uh, of Hong Kong who yearn for freedom, come to America. We're, we're going to follow our friends in Britain. Say, come here. You want to get out from under the thumb uh, of the Communist Party, come to America. We welcome you. Do you, do you think the FBI and law enforcement has uh, the ability to to uh, screen for spies. Uh, one of the criticisms of the proposition I just stated is, well, we would be letting in spies. Do you think, based on your knowledge of security, that we could catch most of the spies? Well, uh, I yield to no one in my faith and confidence in the great work of the men and women of the FBI, but I will tell you that the um, the Chinese counterintelligence threat is the greatest threat certainly the greatest counterintelligence threat that we face right. as a country. Right. And the, the, the sheer number of what we would refer to as non-traditional collectors um, okay. working on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party is something that is a, a massive resource challenge for the okay. FBI. That was probably an unfair question. I'm not asking you to guarantee anything. In the few seconds I have left and begging the indulgence of our esteemed chairman, who's doing a much better job than Durbin, by the way. Oh, he's back. Um, the Horowitz report. Can you tell me how many people you have referred for prosecution at the FBI as a result of the Horowitz report? Well, for prosecution or for discipline? For prosecution first. Just give me numbers because I don't want to abuse my time. Well, I, I, you know, the the prosecution issue related to anything to do with the Horowitz report. How many is in have the you fired? Inspect, inspector, I get it. How many have you department. fired? So all the people, all the most of the people involved in the Horowitz report are former employees. Of the ones who are current, every single one of them, even if mentioned only in passing, uh, has been referred to our Office of Professional Responsibility, which is our disciplinary arm. Now that piece, and this is important, that piece of it, uh, because we're cooperating fully with Mr. Durham's investigation, at his request, we had slowed that process down to allow his criminal investigation to proceed. So at the moment, uh, that process is uh, still underway in order to make sure that we're being appropriately sensitive to the criminal investigation. Okay. So you've had to hold up as a result of the criminal investigation. Right. I'm sorry I went over, Mr. Chairman.
gặp nhau cho luyến lưu khi biệt ly thêm vẫn vương mà vội xa cách anh ơi đôi ngã biết tìm về đâu Anh ơi, đôi ngã biết tìm về đâu. 